Right, what have I got to do? Boosh, it's another flashlight, as usual. This one was sent to me by Banggood. Banggood contacted me and said, Trail Trek, this is this one, this time, this is definitely right up your street. Have a look at this, give us an honest review. We don't get to see the review until it's released. We don't edit it, we don't tell you what to say. Make it honest, that's what I've done. So, honest review of the Astrolux MF01 Mini. Now, the reason I wanted to have a look at this anyway when they mentioned it was because I already have on the left here the EE01S and the slightly older one which I had before the EE01. Uh, difference being is this is using a huge TIR I think it's about 3500 lumens ish uh, running on a 50.2 by Cree still like this one uh, although some people don't like the fat hot spot in the middle I think it's fine it gives you a bit of punch in the middle so I don't mind that um, and the other one was the S, which had the uh, SST emitters down the bottom there, very powerful. I think it was pushing up towards 6,000, 6,500 to 7,000 lumens on uh, turbo. Uh, pretty good, gets hot quick though, but very fun light. And the form factor is very similar for this light. So before we open the box, I'll just quickly tell you which one I've got. Comes in sand, black, green, um, clean anno, clear, sorry, I think what they're referring to there is there's no anodization. In other words, um, it's maybe it's a little bit of a coating or it's just the bare aluminum. Um, so I got mine in grey. The only thing with the emitters is you it only you can't get it in a 50.2 from Cray or anything like that. It comes in a luminous SST20 only. But you have three tint options. So Kelvin values there are 4,000 Kelvin, which I've gone for. So very warm. Um, you've got a supposedly neutral at 5,000 Kelvin. Um, very similar to sort of daylight. And then you've got the white light. Uh, 6,500k. I'm guessing that the output is slightly higher on that. Um, it is mentioned in the manual, but I was unable to find any figures because I don't think I'm probably getting the five and a half thousand that they're claiming, but I'll cover that in the roundup. So other than that, there's not a lot of it really to see on that. So move that out of the way. Let's get the rubbish out of the box. So there's your manual. There's the light itself. And there's your lanyards and stuff. So don't need that. Boosh, get that in the, get that in the bin. I can't be bothered to read that. It's pretty straightforward. I like the way that it's only on one side. The other side is blank. So you're not, it's not like, you know, trying to get through the Pyrenees Alps and trying to fold a map 16 times. It's just one, one clear sheet. Although to be, to be honest, and you will can get pretty complicated. There is an image. So if you want a quick reminder, there's an image, but I will go over the, um, the UI in the UI section. So there, that folds straight back up, boom, in the bin, because I can't even bother to read that. So this does come with a lanyard, and I'll show you that. I haven't used the lanyard, but I understand why sometimes you might want to do that. So you get a couple of O-rings, they're quite large ones, these ones. Quite pliable though, and obviously that's for the threaded section top and bottom. If you do happen to, you know, undo that and shear that off. And I'll just show you the threads. Some people are interested in this. If I can get it to focus. So you can see the O-ring on the left there in black. And then they're quite thin. They're sort of angular-ish though, they're not that bad. Uh, I didn't have any problems with like unthreading them and threading them. Pretty decent and the tolerances are decent. Look, I'm doing that with two fingers. There's no, it just doesn't feel forced in any way. So you've got a couple of them if you need them. So fair enough, boom, put them to one side and here's your lanyard. Pretty decent, I like the way it's got a cinch there, spring-loaded cinch, which you can change and that would go around the wrist. It's not very big, I mean, you know, I'm six foot four, but I can hardly get that over my hand, look. So I don't know if it's made for smaller people, it must be, but not very good if you're a, if you're a big guy like me, so uh, not the best. Um, this section, let's just check if it breaks or not. Pull it on the finger until it hurts. Ah, right, that's hurting now. That is genuinely sore, just to show you the indent there. Um, feels okay, as long as you haven't got big hands like me, it'll work. And your attachment point is on the tail cap. That's it there, and it's nice and big. It's not one of these ones where, you know, it's like trying to put a you know, uh, trying to thread in the eye of a needle, it's not quite that bad. You just need to push that through with a with a thin screwdriver or something. So it's it's one of the better ones. 
In regards to the um, the fit and finish of this, it's pretty decent. Um, the, the heat sinks are okay, um, the anodization has held up. I've carried this for more than two weeks and it's certainly held up. As you can see, it's starting to come off on the high points. This is grey, so obviously the silver highlighted bits are where the anodization is starting to come off. Can we see any more? It's pretty decent. There's a few little dings there and there. Um, there's one there where the anodization's coming off a bit. Um, I did notice some on the tail. It's mainly on the tail. I don't know why. That may be processed differently, but it's, it's certainly no worse than any other. There's a big bit off there. Uh, I don't know why that's suffered so much, but I have carried this in my pocket uh, there as well. So it's it's about standard. It's certainly not up to jet beam levels where they, they last forever or, or, or light and things like that, but pretty decent. No problems with that. And the top section here, which you can screw, because you, if you need access to this TIR section, you have a stainless steel bezel, nice and thick. And I like the way there's a bit of depth there. By getting a bit of depth, it just means if you drop it, you're not going to crack this. Because um, it does have anti-reflective coated glass. And then there's, there's a Carlco TIR setup on there. Because there's seven emitters. Um, and there's one, two, three, four, five, seven lenses there. So TIR, you can see as I'm moving there, each emitter is behind a lens there. Um, well, you know, TIR, so really decent. I like the button. I wish that it, the button was recessed, like the FT03, um, but it, it's a, you know, which is a bit of a shame. But maybe they ran out of room. It's a very short, stubby light, anyway. So I think they're doing decent. So, as I say, seven SST20s. I got the 4000K. It should have a high CRI on the 4000. I can't tell you whether the 5000 or the 6500K do because I'm only testing this version. So, apologies on that. So what does it run on? Well, I'll show you. You can run this on three different cells. So there's your double spring, you see that? So you've got a double spring. Yes, I'm using I'm using the nail. Don't worry for all the people who go, you can't touch that, you can't touch a contact, you might get grease on it. I know, look, it's the nail. So double, pretty decent, good quality. Um, I've had no problems with using this, although there was a tiny little bit of battery rattle, and I'll show you that in a second. Now there's a, what feels like a 3D printed insert. I like the way it's got a, an o-ring on it, you see it there, like a clear o-ring, makes it nice and fit well, but it's a two section. So what you do is, if you wanted to run this on something like an 18650, here's an 18650, so what we'll do is we'll slap that in, push that down, and then that spring. So obviously it's just taking up the slack basically for the, the fact that it will accommodate larger cells. So if you put that on, see, it's running, the running light is on, and it functions. Brilliant. If you think, well, hang on, I happen to have a 21700, what you can do is you can take that out, take that bit out, get a 21700, I happen to have one in this light here. So I'll put it in here. Sorry for all the literal screwing around here, screwing and unscrewing. But there you go, so that goes in, and again the collar takes up the slack, so I'm just showing you, I have tested it with these, they do work. There you go, blue again, and works, no problems. Um, I carried it for one day on that, I think two or three days with a 40T by Samsung, I think this might be a 40T. Um, not this, yeah it's a 40T, I didn't happen to use this cell, this is in a different light at the moment. But it was another 40T, uh, no problems whatsoever, which was great. And then the rest of the time, so I'll take that out. The rest of the time I used a 26650, which is larger. Um, so by doing that, I was able to get a large milliamp hour rating. In other words, more juice for a longer run times. So I'll pop that in. Now there's a little bit of rattle. And when you secure it, there's a tiny bit when it's secured. So just to show you, the light will go on. There, lights on. I haven't overscrewed that or anything. It's tight though. Listen, a little bit of battery rattle. I just wanted to mention that um, I'm not going to mark off too much for that because I know most people don't care. Most people aren't running around, but if that's something that bothers you, there's a little bit there, and it works. Brilliant. So, in regards to the battery, can you see these auxiliary LEDs? These aren't the main LEDs. Obviously, that's the main LED running there. But in between them, you have auxiliary LEDs. And we'll cover how to change what they do. But in the first instance, you can see you have, um, well, there's like a blue, um, a cyan or purple and green. It's hard to see because they're very small. You can take this off and adjust the 
trim on the pots and by doing that you can adjust the brightness and within the UI you can make adjustments you can have pulse you can have high low or off and you can also do the same in the lock mode so in lock mode you can you can make changes but I'll go over that in the UI and um, but they're pretty nice they're not that bright but you can change them I think I've got them on high at the minute but to be fair, the higher you have them, the more your battery's going to drain it. So, you know, you need to temper what you want. I mean, one of the issues I had, I mean, they're lovely and bright on the E07 by uh, Fireflies here. Very, you know, much brighter. However, it drains the battery quicker. So that's something you need to think about. Although, I mean, obviously, if you really cared about that, you'd just do a, a lockout like that and they're off. You know, when it's not in use, you just unlock it. Um, but again, you can change the lock mode in the UI lock. One, two, three, four, UI lock. I think I have mine pulsing. There, see them pulse? So pulse, big pulse, small pulse, big pulse, small pulse. That's just how I happen to have it set. One, two, three, four, back to normal. And then they run all the time. I think they may have been high. There's high, low enough. But we'll go over them. Anyway, so you can use all those cells. I didn't have any problems. You, may, you, you want to look for a cell that's going to put out at least sort of 20 amps and above. But other than that, no problems. You can charge whilst the cell's in, so it's type C, so you have this flap here. So if you pull this up and remove it, there you go, type C. So let's just show that in action. So move that out of the way. So I have a charger here. Uh, there's a type C. So we'll go type A. In fact, that's the wrong one, if you bear with me a few seconds. There's the other wire, because I'm gonna need to check with this wire as well. So if we take this, so type A, so plug that in, and then here's Type-C. So Type-C is the newer one, not like the horrible old micro USB. It's Type-C, it doesn't matter which way you put it in. So to charge, now bear in mind, I think this is probably fully charged, but there's your blue light when it's on, and then if you plug that in, yeah, it's gone green. It'll go red when it's charging, it's fully charged, so you get the green and the, the blue still running there. So that's probably not taking a lot of juice, no, it's not taking anything. So it's fully charged. So you can use it whilst it's charging and it will charge, they're saying up to two amps, I never saw that. Uh, maybe it's the cell I'm using or the setup I'm using, but I didn't personally see that. Um, however, it will do that and it will run whilst charging. So if you have that in, if you have the cable in charging, there it is, so it's in there, it will run with the cable in. Some don't, this does, which is brilliant. However, one thing they haven't done is, and I'll turbo that just to run off some of the cell there the problem is it doesn't work with type c to type c and i'll show you so type c to type c now this is becoming more popular now however if you plug it in nothing no indication of any kind whatsoever it doesn't charge or say it's full nothing i tried many different cables i tried many different setups ac outlets i've got a couple of other adapters over there on the left i couldn't get that to work which is a shame They've already gone to the the bother of allowing you to use it whilst it's charging, which is great if you're hiking and prepping and things like that. However, Type-C to Type-C doesn't work. I'm going to have to knock a mark off for that. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's get that out of the way. Okay, so, you know, uh, you know that's just one thing. Um, this has a 1.5 metre drop rating. So if you drop that, they're claiming it should be okay if it's about 1.5 metres. Um, it, it feels really well made, the machining's nice, There's the fit and finish is nice, I mean the only slight tiny little downfall I would say is the battery rattle but it's not excessive, it's not, not the worst I've ever seen um, and unless you're a maracas player you probably don't care. Okay, it's IPX7, in other words, it's not IPX8 waterproof, it's water resistant, but it's a high water resistance. So you couldn't immerse that in, you know, metres of water. However, heavy rain, you'll be absolutely fine. So quite confident with that. Um, the Astroluxes are pretty good. So um, the, the, these Ox LEDs, again, I want to mention um, some a, a good sort of, well, it's an extra function, really, and it, it is mentioned in the manual, and I'll show you. Um, there's a small section here, so if you look on here, it's got auxiliary LED colour change, so they can be adjusted to display the battery. Although within this UI you can do battery checking, go one, two, three, and it'll blink out your battery voltage. However, you can get a visual indication, so here it is here, so you've got between 4.2 volts, in other words 4.2 is full on these cells, down to 3.9, you'll get the green, the D1 and D2 on, so green will be on and the purple there, 
uh, and the blue and then obviously between 3.9 and then down to 3.3 volts just the d1 and d2 so the green goes off and then 3.3 .3 to 2.9 you just get a red led so it's a quick indication when you pick it up you can see ah right the battery's going down but without having to go into the ui and do a check and then less than 2.9 they're all shut down okay so there's another indication so you can think hang on what's going on here right so i just thought i'd better check that right so i did some testing with this I went out and I did loads of tests, but in fact, look, put this here, right, let's bring up some figures. Okay, here's some testing that I did with the Trail Trek equipment. So CRI, in other words, a colour rendering index, bearing in mind sunlight is 100%, and some of the Crees and some of the greener SST20s and, and what have you, the lower CRIs will go down about 70. They're okay, it's certainly acceptable, but if you're a photographer or a bit of a CRI snob, you're going to want it higher than that. I think 70 is absolutely fine, although it does, it's not ideal in photography, I'll put it that way, uh, but it's certainly doable. So on this one, I got an incredible 97.4 CRI, so way above the 95 claim that you see on some of the websites for this. So very, very high, and I can attest that in person, it looked beautiful. It had, um, it, even though it's a warmer tint in Kelvin value, it did have a rosiness to it, which I love in nature, where, especially on the browns on mud and tree bark, it was beautiful. So you, you got that real true brown where you can kind of lack some of the red aspect on the lower CRI ones. I also tested for the Kelvin value of the tint, and it was actually lower than the 4000 claim, which I don't mind. I don't mind a warm tint. And it wasn't excessively low, and it was 3779 Kelvin, so very nice. Um, bit strange how it was a little bit lower than the 4000 you would normally want, want it quite close to that but again doesn't bother me okay so get rid of that image there okay right so i went out and i tested against and i'll show you what i tested against just so you can see as a size comparison we'll go through these obviously at the end as a comparison i tested against these lights so right let's bring up bring up a picture here okay what can we see here so Top left, ASB Me 70, running on a 21700, um, not USB rechargeable. We'll, we'll go over those specs. Um, I just want to give you the, the quick basics of that, using an orange peel with a 70.2 Cree, uh, with a, I think it was a neutral, um, might be slightly above neutral uh, tint. Then you've got the Ashlux EA01, which is the fat TIR, TRI, TIR, sorry. Um, I've, I've got marbles in my mouth here. Um, running on a 50.2, which is, I think you get about 3,500 lumens out of that one. Um, and the Ashlux E01, a lot more lumens, pushing up towards six, six and a half thousand to 7,000, running on some SST20s. Uh, but that's a smooth quad emitter. So firm, bottom layer, running on three 18650 batteries. Um, and it is a quad emitter again. Uh, very nice. Uh, Colour rendering is pretty nice, but um, uh, not such a warm tint. Um, Ashlux MF01 Mini, which is the one we're looking at, bottom middle there, uh, which I'll discuss obviously. And the Fireflies E07, which is using the older, um, I think it's the XLP Highs by Cree, um, quite white light, um, get, getting on a bit now. I know they released a new one in 2021, but they, they changed so little I didn't bother updating it. Okay, so let's see what we're going to see. So start at the beginning, top left, ace beam. Looks a little bit white, very uniform beam there. I think that's perfectly acceptable. You've got a nice bit of periphery, a little bit of punch in the middle there, perfectly acceptable. Next one, middle, Astrolux EA01. You could argue periphery is poor, but it is partly down to the design and it's only 3,500 lumens. When you compare it to this, you know, I think it's 4,600, 4,800 on the ace beam, you're not gonna get as much lumens to work with there. So you may not want to use the EA01 if you're going hiking, for example, because you lose peripheral vision there to the left and the right. Next one along is a bump up. So it's the same body as the Astrolux EA01, but the EA01S is a quad emitter. Much more lumens, way more lumens, nearly double. Um, I think that's way better. It fills in that periphery on the far left and right, and it's got a nice little bit of punch. You could argue maybe the punch is less. In other words, throw in the center is slightly less than the EA01, so that's quite interesting. Um, and then bottom left, Sofa and SP36. I think that's a very nice image in regards to color rendering. Uh, it's pretty accurate as to what you would get during the day, although it's not quite as browny 
and warm as the MF01 to the right there, but pretty decent. Um, bottom, you're starting to look, the problem with the SP36, you're losing a tiny little bit of peripheral there, but it's not excessive. And it's quite a heavy light, obviously. Okay, and I think that runs at around 5,252 lumens on table on that shot there. So bottom middle is the light we're looking at, right? What, what can we see here? So this is the, there's a distinct lack of a side, isn't there? So in very similar to the Astrolux EA01, which is running at 3,500 lumens, this one, which has a claimed 5,500 lumens, I'm not so sure. It's possible. It's possible. Um, it feels like about 480 not even the 4,600, 4,000, that's, it doesn't feel like I'm getting the full, although the, I accept that there'll probably be less lumens on the high CRI emitter, that could be, that could account for that. I would also say, even though it's a TR, TIR, you don't seem to have a floody beam there, but I like the fact that the push out on the throw is usable, it's going right the other side of that um, bank of the river there, and you can make out what's happening, so I think, what it loses on width, it makes up for in throw, but I think that's maybe an artifact of the fact it's using SSTs, which are known for throw, that could account for that. Um, but colour reproduction, beautiful reds and browns there, um, although there aren't any specific reds in there, it's bringing out the red in that environment. Uh, okay, so what else can we see? Um, you've got the Fireflies bottom right, very white, um, but it is a very white tint on that. In Kelvin value, I think it's 6,400, 6,500. Um, it's doing okay. Um, it, in person, it probably looks one of the brightest, I would say. But I think white tints tend to look brighter, and maybe that's why the Astrolux doesn't make me feel like I'm getting the full 5,500 lumens. That could, again, that could account for it. I don't know. But pretty decent. So not a lot to say other than, let's be honest here, Astrolux MF01 Mini is slightly lacking on width which you wouldn't have expected really, bearing in mind um, it's a TIR, you would expect a nice bit of floody, floodiness, but it's certainly a uniform beam um, and it looks nice, that's what I would say. Okay, so get rid of that image there. Right, let's get rid of those. Oosh, I'll bring them back momentarily. So what I'll do is, for those faint of heart, you can do a runner now because I'm going to put a little thing up here, I'm going to talk about the UI, just briefly for people who don't know Andrew. So go at the end of this if you don't like it. Okay, so for people who are still here, we'll quickly go over the UI on this light. So quite simple, so on, off, yeah, that very simple there. And when it is on, you can ramp it up, so click and hold, and you get a little flicker there to maximum, and click and hold, and it will go down to its minimum there. Okay, so pretty nice. When it's on, if you double click, you can go to a turbo there, so it takes you straight to its maximum turbo setting. When it's in a ramping mode, you can one, two, three, and it should there. So it should, instead of smooth ramp, you should get stepped ramp. Can you see how different that is? So it will step one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So double click again, and it will go to a smooth ramp, or should do anyway. There you go, smooth ramp, sorry, three clicks. There you go, nice. Okay, so, you know about the turbo, um, it does have thermal step down. I think by default this is set to 45 degrees Celsius. Um, you can change that, and bear in mind you might need to change the um, calibration on the temperature. So use the temperature check mode, which is three clicks, and I'll go over in a moment. But you may need to, I think it's 10 clicks to go into the thermal config. I'm not gonna cover anything under advanced. This is the basics of Andura, okay? If you want that, go to another video, because I'm trying to keep this to the point. Okay, so you have three clicks. One, two, three, and then you get certain modes. So, it should start with, I think it's a, by default, it'll be battery. So, let's check. Two, three, four, yeah, this is battery, right? So it will flash out the voltage of the cell. So, let's see what we've got here. One, two, three, in fact, go, go at the start again. So, one, two, three, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So three point nine volts. So four point two will be full, and three point nine is working its way down. So a, a quick representation above and beyond that little trick with the auxiliaries to let you know what the level is. So you also have other modes within there. So um, if we go to so three, and then you, if you double click, you'll go to the next one. And if I remember rightly, it's sunset mode. It, that will slowly go to off. That's for people who are scared of the dark or something. And then the next one, I think, is beacon. Double click to go to the next one. Not very bright, is it? I think that's beacon, yeah. But I think you can click and hold and adjust the, the brightness, maybe. It's not very bright, that, is it? That's a bit, although I suppose for beacon you don't want it, you don't want to use up too much of your battery. Okay, fair enough. And the next one should be temperature check, so it will flash out the um, voltage value of the battery, and then back to normal. You also have a lock mode. One, two, three, four. That means it's locked. Even if you press that, you're not going to run the battery down on table or anything like that. Um, however, within lock mode, you have a backup mode. So if you don't want to unlock it, because if you want to use your light, you're going to have to go one, two, three, four. Right now, turn the light on. Right, do the job. Right, one, two, three, four. Instead of doing that, you can pull it out of the pocket, click and hold, and you get a very low mode. It's good for reading maps and not ruining night vision. I think there's a double click, yeah, to get a little bit more. Brilliant. I use that all the time. Um, although, obviously, a quick lockout method would be just to do that. It's locked out, it won't work. That's the safest method, but you do have it in the UI there. So that's your four clicks. Um, within that, you can adjust the auxiliaries. So one, two, three, four. So I'll show you. So we're in lock mode, just to prove we're in lock mode. There, it only does that. So what you can do is, you can click three times. So if you look at the auxiliaries, they're pulsing at the moment. So if we go to one, two, three, they appear to be off. And then one, two, three, that's them on there, you see them? They're quite hard to see there. See them there? And then one, two, three. And they should pulse, I think. Oh no, that's high, so that's high. So it was off, low, high, and then pulse, which is what I use. There, pulse. So those are, those are your options. And then one, two, three, four, back to normal again. So bang, you can turn it on again. You can also adjust them in another man manner but I'll show you that in a moment. So five clicks should give you momentary mode. So one, two, three, four, five. There, there's a little flicker. So it's either on or off. It's kind of a tactical thing. It's either on or off. You know, you may find a use for that, you may not. So unscrew that, back to normal. Right, you've got six clicks, which is muggle mode. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, what muggle mode does is it, it removes the, the highest setting, the lowest setting, and it, it removes a lot of the features. So if you were to hand this to someone who isn't very good with flashlights or doesn't want to learn loads of stuff, you can hand it to them and it'll work. You can turn it on, you can ramp it up some of the way and you can ramp it down some of the way. You can't go all the way down and you can't go all the way up. So it just removes some of the features. So one, two, three, four, five, six, I think that should take it off and it should ramp all the way up. Yeah, much higher there. You see, it's got the flicker, much better. Okay, so you also have seven clicks, which is your backlight modes. In other words, this. So at the moment it's on. I think that may be in high. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then is that low or pulse? Yeah, that's pulse. So that's now this isn't in lock mode. This is pulse unlocked. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Back on low. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven back on high so you can make that adjustment on that you also have click click hold modes so i'll do that just quickly click click hold and that will take you to your special modes so that's candle there it's supposed to flicker and splutter like a, like a candle flame can you see that hard to see and you can click and hold to make it brighter or click and hold to make it not so bright a bit more like a candle so it, it sort of splutters like a candle if you want to be romantic you can use that one so to go to the next one i think it's double click isn't it so double click so that is now a bike mode so the whole point of bike mode is it provides you with light in a dis in a distractive disruptive flack flicker which draws attention to yourself in other words increases your safety on a bike basically so there it is you can ramp it up and you can ramp it down again to save some juice so pretty decent. And then the next one is, is it party mode or something daft like that? 
yeah party mode so in other words it's a, it's a strobe i'll cover that because i don't annoy people who don't like strobes but what you can do is you can click and hold so that's now very fast and then click and hold again there and slow it down slow it down slow it down so you can change the frequency higher or lower so brilliant the next one is tactical so i will have to close this so there so that's maximum brightness on off as a strobe and again you can click and hold to speed it up or double press and hold there to slow it down so you have that ability i tend to like a bit of a slower strobe if it's too fast it doesn't have its intended effect especially tactical wise and i think you get lightning storm there that's lightning storm so it's it's off and then you get like a flicker and a flash there you see it so it's it's trying to mimic the lighting you would get during an electrical storm for example and that's it so those are your main modes on Andrew. it's a shame they, they didn't have Andrew 2 um, but this is an older light i would have, would have liked to have seen them update that this time went on though okay so that's the end of the ui okay so for everyone coming back and um, that's the end of the ui you don't need to listen to me waffle anymore so let's go over good points and bad points and then i will discuss these other lights so let's have a think about this right pros very compact look even in regards to these that these ones i mean that's much less lumens look it's smaller very compact yeah the head's a bit bigger but that's you know a tiny little bit maybe fatter juicier here compact it's high cri way above 95 which is brilliant you've got all those tint options so 4000 5000 and then the for the ones who love the white You've got the 6500 and um, you can only get the sst 20s that i was able to find but you've got plenty of body co color options and things like that i like the button it's 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 that classic astrolux button i just wish it was recessed like the ft03 i would have really liked to have seen that um it's fairly good usb flap look it's one of those ones where it's doubled watch there you see how on the bottom it's fatter ever so slightly I like them like that otherwise they're just useless so i would probably expect this to be ipx7 i've got no problems with that and i like the way that that's recessed um you know good drop rating it wouldn't be nice to see high but it's quite a hefty thing you've got all three cell sizes from 18650 21700 or a 26650 which is in here now again brilliant and the price is pretty low however cons not power delivery yes i understand i think this was released at the end of 2019 or something like that but they could have at least updated that that's a problem moving forward if you can't go type c to type c that's a bit of a problem i will take a mark off for that um for me it doesn't feel like 5500 lumens um that could just be two things it could be the high cri you're not getting as much lumens and the tint uh, Kelvin value is 4000 and in fact oh, it's below that uh, from my reading therefore generally whiter ones look brighter it could be a combination of those two things and maybe you're getting about 4700 I don't know however it doesn't feel like the full amount of me so I'll not mark off a little bit I've got to be honest that's what I see and, and, and regardless of what I think I've shown you those images before you can see it doesn't look as bright as some of the other lights yes I realize some of those are at a higher level but not excessively higher and especially when you compare it against a 3500 lumen you know i think it should be doing a little bit better a little bit of battery sh battery battery sh in fact you know the mad maraca there a little bit of battery rattle uh, not andrew v2 so a lot to like um you know i'm gonna give you a quick mock i'm gonna have to yeah, there's there's things i don't like i'll give it a see i really like how this puts light into the world it looks beautiful however I just wish it was a bit wider maybe it's an artifact of how deep this is i don't know um, and a bit more lumens um and the step down isn't too crazy either it doesn't get super hot it does eventually on turbo but i'm pretty impressed um it just gets an eight just eight out of ten i think that's honest okay so let's talk about some of these other lights so very similar well i mean almost identical but uh, slightly different um is the 3500 lumen ea01 i still like this i'm wondering if this is going to now replace this one uh could do because they, they look similar i um, mean when you use them outside um this doesn't have as nice a tint or cri though i'll probably shift towards this if for one that would grab 
uh, but we'll see but it's still decent i had a lot of fun using this i still like this one and it's got the cock and ball flap which i really like because it works and you can spin it out the way and it never gets in the way of your usb cable so just another option there probably a bit cheaper for you if you wanted a lot more lumens and you thought i don't care i just want maximum lumens you go for the one s heats up rapidly looks very similar same battery options but it's using a smooth quad setup here um a pretty decent nice little bit of throw on that one a little cheeky one this and um, if you want a bit more fun you could probably go for that um getting on now the easier seven by fireflies i love the button i love the auxes auxiliaries even though they're quite draining on the battery um, over long term obviously um, and there was a slight color mismatch if you remember look this is one color and then that seems to be different see that it's like a slightly different sand color which is a bit of a shame obviously they're made at different locations um, or different times with different recipes on the paint or something, I don't know. Uh, but still holds up nice fat um, heat sinks, although the price on this was always a little bit excessive. Uh, but 21700 you can't put a 26650 in, but it is nice and slim. Um, another option, but very, very costly, 21700 again. Orange peel reflector using a 70.2. Um, you know, very bright, um, very effective and very pocketable. And I like the look of this, but excessive price, you could argue. Okay, and obviously USB charging on this one, you have to take the cell out like that and then plug your type C in there. So you can't use that whilst charging, can you? But it's more about looks and that increases the waterproofing on that. And there's no USB on this, which keeps it nice and slim. Another option if you didn't care about size, SP36. Nice high CRI, nice emitters, um, slight lack on width. Um, bearing in mind it's quite a large light you wouldn't have thought so but nice nice annual uh, v2 um, decent just decent that's all i can really say i can sum that up by saying decent but a, a big size but to be fair it's using the three eight and six fifties there three button top eight and six fifties it works without button tops um, and you can actually you can charge them put that in if you needed to or put them in another light and it will still function believe it or not so you don't even have to have all the cells in although it is a usb rechargeable and type c which i'll show you there you go type c very nice okay so there's just some of your other options so i'm going to give this an eight it just gets an eight but no power delivery doesn't feel like it's getting the full output it's a tiny little bit of battery rattle and it's not v2 and but yeah it's an older light but it would have been nice to have seen them update that as time went on okay so 8.5 um eight sorry eight out of ten i think that's an honest uh, mark and we'll go outside and i'll do loads of comparative shots and you can make up your mind if you agree with me or not and you can slap it in the comments section and say i think this is a load of rubbish or i like this um because it helps others or if you own it let us know how it goes and that helps other people with buying decisions it's really important let's help each other on this channel okay so that's enough of me right i'm off we